Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the gift. Welcome to Sunday. I have a really sweet show for you today. Um, it came in so spontaneously this morning. Actually, I had a different plan for my show, and the spirit just swept in this morning with this beautiful prompt. And I have special guest Kirsten Buxton with me here today. She's joining us from Camus. Hi, Kirsten. Hi, Kirsten. <laughs> Yeah, so our, this show came in, this collaboration came in so spontaneously because you've just arrived back from India on what feels like a whirlwind adventure and, and so much to share. So I just feel inspired. You're a presenter coming up on next month, uh, next week's um, Stepping Into Magnitude retreat. And just as we were joining this morning, it was so clear that there's so much from your trip that is so relevant. So I'm really excited to hear more about it. Mm, beautiful. Yeah, I'm so glad to join with you and have you kind of pull it back into my awareness because it, to me it feels so simple and so natural that I wouldn't even know what to say. <laughs> I don't even know what to talk about. But yeah, but so it feels beautiful for us to collaborate in this way and you can just remind me of like, what is, yeah, what is it? Because there's the sense of the consistency of the, the magnitude and the presence behind it all. And then, yeah, as we talk about the different stories or different experiences, then it just feels like that brings it into the forefront of what it really is. So. Well, I love right off the bat how you mentioned the simplicity of it, because that was what really struck me as, as we were talking about this and you were just sharing a little bit about, about your time there is that I have some idea of magnitude and it, it looks like a, you know, something very lofty and maybe out of reach. It feels, it feels big. But as we were talking this morning, you just drew it right back and to know it's the simplicity of a gentle, loving presence. That is magnitude. And so maybe we can even start there because as you were describing your experience of India, you were describing there was like this contrast where there's a deep awareness of God that's underneath everything. And maybe everything on the surface looks very busy, but that it's really about this presence. And that is the magnitude. So I'd love to hear more. I'd love to hear more about just your initial experience of India, like even in a broad sense. Yeah, well, I think the whole purpose for me going there actually was not really to see India or go to special places um, or go there f for a particular experience. I went there at, upon invitation um, from Clint, who is a, um, just a beloved friend, and we were given the term by Jesus, prayer partners. We became prayer partners six months ago. And we went on these amazing adventures like Japan, New Zealand, and here in the States. And then I had this feeling about India. And as we were talking, he was thinking, but why would you come to India? What would you do? What would your purpose be? And he couldn't wrap his mind around how I could come or what I would even do there. And then at one point he had this realization, oh, wow, this is for the healing of my mind. I could invite you to come purely for that reason. And it felt so beautiful. We just felt the miracle of that guidance. And so the foundation for my trip to go to India was, was what for us is so normal. It's about joining in mind and having this priority of the healing of the mind and being so connected in oneness that you're literally aware of the presence of God in every moment or what there is to be healed. So that was it. And then I didn't go as a teacher. I didn't feel guided to set up anything in advance. So I almost felt like I was an undercover agent <laughs> for Jesus or for the spirit um, to just go and, and just be and say yes to these invitations to, um, to join and go on these adventures or these trips or these meals or these outings um, to just be the presence of be the presence of, of who I am and then let the miracle reveal itself, let the joinings come to me and reveal, you know, what they are. So it was, yeah, that was really the context and the foundation for why I went there. 
and and uh, and then yeah to really just feel that that experience of the sameness the sameness beyond it all is what I found myself experiencing a beautiful combination because you mentioned the fluidity of it all and the sameness and there's such a flexibility of yeah let's go here now even if it's jumping on a plane like you know very very swiftly it's like yeah yeah that feels great and the simplicity of of the presence it just it feels like a really powerful combination and you mentioned even just a lot of things happening so spontaneously and it seems like you've just got so many parables to share i wonder if you want to just um, see Dr. Naram. So Dr. Naram and Clint have been linked for a little while, and Clint has had a, um, a learning assignment with him, I think, or maybe you can even just share about that. I don't want to, um, yeah, I would love to learn more about it because I am learning about these things for pretty much the first time as well. So, um, yeah. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, he, Clint was, um, met Dr. Naram and then his father was very ill. And, and so he took his father to see him um, because Western medicine couldn't save his life, basically. And through his experience with Dr. Naram, he was deeply inspired and was impelled to share him with as much as he could. He was like, wow, everyone should know about this option. Um, in terms of of medical support, it's way more than medical support. It's it's um, Ayurvedic, ancient healing uh, methods. So in terms of, um, and he's a, a research, he's a researcher, a university researcher. So for the last nine years, he's worked very closely with Dr. Naram, um, and been with him and travelled with him and yes, learned from him and gone on this journey. And he's just coming to the end of this nine-year period where he has a book um, that, that is coming out in the next few months. So that's the context for him being there. And he, yeah, it's like his, his sort of family in India. He spends a lot of time, I'd say, probably lives there more than he lives anywhere else in the world. So when I... I lost you. Oh, <laughs> okay, there's a photo. <laughs> so this is Clint and I, and now this is Dr. Naram and I. Yeah, he didn't tell Dr. Naram anything about me specifically, other than I was a co-founder of a spiritual community, um, a mystic, uh, but not really much about that, and more that I was just there to, um, to help him with the book because that was like the context that Dr. Naram could completely understand, that I was there to read through it with him. Um, so I felt really honoured actually to spend this time with, with Dr. Naram and, the, and his family in such a close way because um, he's, yeah, he's, he's helped a million patients actually in a very effective way and um, he's, yeah, in terms of just a healing modality, you know, Mother Teresa asked him for help. The Dalai Lama has asked him for help. And, uh, and so we had these experiences together. And it wasn't until right at the end, actually, towards uh, the end of my stay, I started to get the strong prompt to meet with him, have a one-on-one -on -one with him. And... And so I asked him for five minutes because he's really, really busy. He said, yes, yes, of course, of course, five minutes. And uh, before we met, I started to have this feeling, I want to give him a gift because he's so generous. He's in constant service you know, through his work. He's a miracle worker. You know, the, It's like the healing and the medical part of it is the backdrop to really knowing that it, the healing is in mind and then the medical part is, is the magic that is also supportive for the healing. Um, so I was like, okay, Jesus, what can I give him? Because I'd been hosted. I think he just gave me all these, just constantly wanting to give. And then Jesus said to me, give him the gift of, of your wisdom. Give him the gift of awareness of who you are and what it is that you do. I was like, 
oh wow okay <laughs> it's time it's time to kind of reveal and share the depth of what it is that we do so we sat for five minutes and after five minutes he was like oh my god why didn't we meet before now i can't believe it so we sat for half an hour and he was deeply inspired by a course of miracles um, he'd actually treated marion williamson years ago she was one of his patients but she, he thought she'd written the book he had no context of of it all so i as best as i could was giving him a full context of it saying actually no jesus jesus you could say is the author of this book he's our teacher because in india you have a guru you have a teacher well who wrote the book and how many students and who what is this course how do we do this course you know so it's so different to try to explain no, it's like a self-study course and jesus is the teacher and but the more we talked and the more i shared about healing of mind and consciousness um the more he then revealed to me about he said, well actually my master said to me because there seems like there's so much focus on the body you know everyone who comes to him is because they usually their body's breaking down or they have someone who's autistic in their family or suicidal you know some do come with more of a deeper more of a mental or a spiritual or um, situation that they want help with but for the most part it's physical people come with cancer and cystic fibrosis and they've gone through menopause and then they want to have a baby you know all these different kind of things like and but when I shared with him about the depth of the metaphysics of the course and even said, you know, this, the teaching is that, you know, what is, what is true is eternal and then all else of form, including the body, you know, is temporary. That's the Maya, the illusion. He's like, yes, 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 of course, of course. <laughs> and we went into this deeper conversation to then where he was saying, actually, you know, my master tells me, he said, it, it's 90% mind. The healing is 90% of the mind and then it's just 10 percent to do with the body but for you of course i realize it's 100 percent consciousness so it's different there and he said and the other thing that i do that's different is it's about perception i help people change their perception i'm like okay great <laughs> you know there were so many points that we could join on and uh that i could just celebrate with him about i said actually that's the whole healing of a course of miracles we have to shift our perception it's like the projection of this universe from a place of separation is where all of the guilt and the suffering and the heartache and then the illnesses because we're out of alignment with our true identity and it is the healing of perception that brings us back into alignment with who we are and and therefore then our life's purpose of how everything can be healed you know and used for a, a higher purpose so it was really beautiful to join with him um, and he was very, very inspired to hear about David and what we do and he wants to meet David and he gave me some gifts from Tibet to give to him. And yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. It just sounds like your whole trip was lit up with holy encounters, like just so spontaneously, as you were saying, like basically you just, it's perfect actually because we've just come from undoing the doer so this is like a demonstration of i i need to do nothing like i'm i'm here to be truly helpful and then from there the ones that are drawn to the presence you called it the invisible presence of love and how how like the holy spirit like just really waiting and available for the ones that feel a call to join to just find you actually and um yeah, I feel like Dr. Naram is a perfect example of that. And, and you, also mentioned, um, you also mentioned that you were contacted, or you had plans to go to Swamiji's birthday party. So this huge, huge uh, gathering of like 250,000 people, but plans changed and another invitation and holy encounter came in and reworked things. So I wonder if you feel inspired to share about that. Sure, sure. When we were initially um, thinking of going to this, this event with 250,000 people, um, it, was, it was a day trip. So it was getting up at four in the morning, traveling, going to this event, traveling, and then flying back at, at four in the morning. And I, I thought, well, 
I just couldn't feel that there would be much of an opportunity to be joining with Clint and that the main purpose for me being there was us to have opportunities to pray together, you know, and join and be of service together. And so I said, let's just see if something else comes in before I say yes, you know, buy me a plane ticket. And then sure enough, it was like the spirit did that every single time. It was like anything I wanted, anything I felt, the spirit was like, yes, of course, let me just arrange that for you. So there was an invitation from a friend of Dr. Naram and Clint's, um, a very, very wealthy man. Uh, he started off with nothing and he just had this, um, and and just recently he gave like $30 million to, to charity last year, just as a context of of where he finds himself now. So he invited us, he wanted to spend time with us and then drive us to the Swamiji's birthday party so it all worked out perfectly I could feel yes this is a holy encounter <laughs> and that's what I wanted I really want wanted the holy encounter opportunities so as we joined with him you know there's I don't know I just had the sense that because of because of the wealth and all that he does you know there's I don't know it's like a a focus on serving others or you know and, and he's very wanting to do so much for India, you know, do all he can. He has a beautiful heart. But as we were talking, yeah, I just asked him about his relationship with God. And he just started sharing about when he was a little boy, like a child. He, people just couldn't believe how much he loved God. And he just wanted to pray all the time and, and, and worship and and. And then as we talked about everything else that's unfolded, I could just feel the sense of, of such joy and connection. Like I just had tears in my eyes when he was sharing about, about that. And, and I could feel the sense that underneath it, like everything unfolding for him was this core purpose of the relationship with God. And so now he, he started this whole movement of trying to support even young girls in India to find their voice and speak up. So he goes to schools and he's developed this whole program. Um, and, but there's actually, it's some of it is coming from, you know, you have to speak up, you have to find your voice, you have to make a difference in the world. And there's, there's a push, there's a feeling of a push element behind it and so I could just feel the sense of wow that's I could feel well that's why I'm here I'm here to remind him actually he didn't do any of this by himself no like the success comes from God it's not personal it's like whatever it is that you're to do in this life it's beyond your personal control and yes the inspiration for Get in touch with what you feel you want. Dream big. They're always talking about dream big in India because there's so much poverty, you know, so much poverty that it's almost this, this impulse to rise above, you know, to expand, to be the greatest you can be despite the situation with millions and millions of people who don't even have toilet facilities or clean water facilities. You know, it's right there. Everywhere you go, you're reminded of of the contrast, you know, this huge contrast. And so he wants to inspire, you know, everyone he can to dream big and which is so beautiful. And yet I could feel we were invited again a second time to meet with him right before we left. He flew us to Delhi to this book presentation um, on yoga, which is another parable. But I just... I just found the spirit coming through me anytime we had an opportunity to talk just about thanking God, you know, thanking God and the remembrance of the, the humbleness of, yeah, of relaxing into where it comes from. So it was, it was a contrast, like even as we went to this, this book launch, he was there and there were, uh, to politicians and very wealthy um, people and well-known, you know, well, highly respected people there speaking and, and uh, 
yeah, I can just feel the sense of what is it really that, you know, what is it really that's behind it all? And then as I sat there, two of the politicians who spoke, like when it came to their speech, they actually just started speaking about oneness. <laughs> it was just so amazing. And one of them got up and they'd, apparently there'd been a lot of stuff like with this political party and, and, and just, between, I think, Hinduism and Muslim as well, but just being a bit of an issue. And, and then when he got up there, he just, at one point, just started to speak about what is real and what is true and what is of value. And he said, you know, yoga is of union. Yoga is non-duality. Yoga is an integration into the oneness that you are. Everything of time and space, everything that is external, everything that you seek for and desire in this world, you desire with your eyes, it's external. If you, you desire and hear something with your ears, it's external. See, that's not the truth. You know, that's not the truth of who we are. We have to come back to the union. We have to come back to what am I really here for? You know, what am I really here for? <laughs> so, and he was talking even about success in this world. It just felt like the whole thing was orchestrated. And he said, if your focus is on success in this world, you know, your ego gets puffed up and then you will be deflated. And so it's, it's not about that. It's about, and he was really speaking about magnitude and littleness. He was speaking about rise up, you know, <laughs> allow, allow your life to be the fullest of what it's meant to be. And just remember where it comes from. You know, remember who is giving this to you. Um. Ooh, wow. Wow. Yeah, well, you touched on something there that has been a theme. It's something I've seen a number of times over the last week or so. And that's um, something David spoke about recently, too. Like, the, the senses are actually a trick. And with what you're saying, it's always to come back to the feeling and to let that actually lead the way. And it, it was reminding me, too, of another thing you were sharing about um, a book signing or a book event that um, was for Clint's book and how there's just such an underlying uh, care and deep honoring of the listening and like a, a real solid connection with one another. and. Um, yeah, I wonder if you care to touch on that because you described it in the context of like um, with our community and just even, well, yeah, with our community there, we have expression sessions, which are an opportunity to really speak up, as you're saying, to really clear the heart. And this just felt like something that was actually very natural. Like there was a natural honoring of, I have something to say and I'm going to speak and then just a, a real care. Um. Yeah, 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 that's when um, the first weekend I was there, um, Clint and I were there with uh, Dr. Naram and his family, and we all came together one evening for Clint to read through the first chapter, or one of the chapters in the book, uh, to just hear everyone's thoughts and feedback from everyone, and um, yeah, that's what I really noticed. Like we have a lot of, that's what we do in our community. We practice with, with being prayerful, practice with listening and honoring and holding the space for one another to be able to, to fully communicate all that's there and have the space to be able to do that, have the space held. And so I was just so, I felt it. I felt it was such a gift to be there with them and they were just naturally holding that for each other you know in this um the book reading like he read through it and then he asked one by one you know i asked you know what are your thoughts and what are your feelings and tell me your insights and tell me what you would change and yeah but it was beyond it was beyond just the interaction it was such a deep it reminded me of being in japan actually when i was there the presence that was held amongst them all was they're so present, so present and listening. And it's so supportive for the one speaking because then the one who was speaking didn't feel rushed. 
they felt that what they had to share was worthy of everyone's attention. And so they could really let it come from a deeper place. And then every sentence spoken was valuable. And so it was the same experience there that, that I felt with that group. There was one uncle who was <laughs> kind of jumping in a little bit, but Clint was like, actually, just, just wait, just wait. There's, you know, everyone else is just very, very aware. I think he was just a bit passionate and kind of had his thoughts and kept <laughs> getting triggering, triggered by what he wanted to say. But yeah, there was such a, for everyone else, there was such an awareness. They just weren't even disturbed. It was like, no, just stay, stay, listen. Mm. And there's a word, there's a saying there in India, I shared it on one of my Facebook posts, Atiti Devo Baba, Atiti Devo Baba. And it means basically God is showing up in the unexpected guest. (laughs) (laughs) Isn't that Oh, wow. Yeah. So whenever you experience being interrupted by someone, a titi devil baba, God is showing up in the unexpected guest. And I just feel this is such a, a beautiful symbol of littleness versus magnitude. You know, littleness is when you're believing your own littleness thoughts. Even the fact I could be interrupted. This is not what I had in mind. I have another plan, etc., etc. et cetera. Et cetera. Oh, but to actually have that as the first response, like, oh, this is God showing up. You know, let me meet you with total honor in this moment. You know, and then we see where it goes and, and how much time we have together. Mm. Gracious. Gracious. Wow. Yeah, it just draws, it actually draws us full circle, I feel, because what you were sharing around, um, hmm, let me find the words again. What you were sharing about how there's such a, um, a patience with everybody has something valuable to say like that actually is the magnitude that's the worthiness of just something as simple i love that it draws us back to the simplicity because it can't be that magnitude is difficult like it has to be so close it has to be uh closer than your breath i have that phrase in my mind lately it has to be closer than my breath mm-hmm. for it to really be felt for it to really be a felt experience so just that simplicity, like the magnitude is available all the time to all of us. It's not something that needs to be striven for. And in fact, the Course even says, all your striving must be directed against littleness. And it's just, as you said, like it's just a relaxing into where, where is it coming from? And then the magnitude just flows from there. It sounds like that's the way your whole trip went, actually. It's just, I will step back and let him lead the way. And then all of a sudden, this whole adventure unfolds and sponta- uh, the spontaneity and the holy encounters. And it just, it feels so rich and restful and exciting. Like, yeah, Holy Spirit, take me on that adventure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, really effortless. It's just like a very full, very full flowing river with so fluid um so fluid you know and that's what i feel like the whole symbol of india is it's you cannot have expectations you cannot set parameters <laughs> around certain things and especially when there's a titi devil baba that means if god shows up you know everyone knows that if you make an appointment someone could be up to an hour late because of a titi devil baba <laughs> you know? because if god shows up it's so precious that you can't say I have another plan no it's like yeah it's I mean sure enough the spirit arranges things for whatever those meetings are to be no that's what I saw just this divine plan that just kept unfolding with this fluidity and spontaneity that just felt like it was underlying everything so Oh, that's wonderful, Kirsten. Well, I have a surprise because um, we've run out of time, but we have an extra few minutes if we'd like. So I just wondered, actually, we have some some photos that will help just drive the experience home. So I wondered if we just put them up and if you wanted to just share a little bit about them or if you feel more inspired to speak to the retreat this weekend. I just feel like these last five minutes are an opportunity to like bring it home or something. 
Mm, sure. I think, um, well, yeah, I mean, the, the retreat this weekend, I feel is such a, it's this topic and it feels really rich. And so I just, yeah, I really look forward to it of being in the immersion of this theme um, for the whole weekend. So any of you feel, yeah, to join us, it just feels precious, really precious to be just reminded of the simplicity of, of who we are. And um, yeah, we could put up a couple of photos. That sounds great. Um, okay, that's Dr. Naram putting joy blankets. Can you see how colorful those blankets are? He goes out occasionally and, um, or they do like as a group and we'll just go and find people who are cold and put blankets on them. This was a mother with her children laying on concrete because he had a night in his youth when his father had, had picked him out of the house. He had a cold night on concrete and he made a commitment that when he could, he would offer this and someone put a blanket on him that night he woke up in the morning and he had a blanket over him and he yeah he made a commitment that later on when he had the money and the resources he would offer this gift and they're so joyful and bright i just love those blankets they're so loving <laughs> oh. oh wonderful mm. oh that's me it's uh now, going to see Gandhi, so this was part of the contrast, you know, being, going there to this place, this was the home of Gandhi, um, where he grew up, actually. And just walking around there, there was such a palpable feeling of love and honor and respect that I could feel, you know, like the love of a nation is what I felt like I was tuning into there. And it's simple, just the simplicity even within which they lived there. A very, very simple place, but just walking around it was, felt like an honor to walk around and be reminded of the gift. And there's another Gandhi one. Okay, that's... No, that's meeting Jack Canfield, just a surprise encounter. <laughs> um, that's with Rizwan, who's the uh, very generous businessman who invited Clint and I to go and be with him those two times. He took us around um, Gandhi's home. That's the Swamiji on his throne. <laughs> and this is a video just to give, we can play it just for a little bit if it'll play, just to give a sense of, the volume of the people there. If you've never been to an event with 250,000 people, which uh, that's kind of what it looks like. It was such an interesting contrast, like all of the people. And then he came down this purple aisle on a big golden throne mm. with fireworks going out the front. And there was a huge screen at the front with these Big, there's a screen uh, saver with these big elephants with this boom, boom, boom music <laughs> with different gurus. Here he is. Oh, that was him going down the slide there. You know, this kind of like the outpicturing of magnitude, you know, with these gurus and on the elephants, like charging on the screen saver while he comes down on this big golden throne with fireworks down the middle of the aisle surrounded by 250,000 devotees. And I was, it was just fun. It was really fun to be there. This, this angel I met, I sat with some very, very sweet devotees um, mm. who were friends with, with Clint and Dr. Naram. Um, they're from Europe actually. And I just, yeah, I went there and sat with them and we had a beautiful holy encounter time together, kind of in the midst of it all. And uh, we were just there for a short amount of time and Clint was on the stage and then as, once the Swamiji started to speak, uh, we actually left really quickly uh, because you don't want to get stuck in the traffic of 250,000 people all leaving at the same time. <laughs> but I was there just long enough to hear him say, this is about undoing the ego and you cannot know God unless you actually undo the ego and lay it all aside. So I was like, thank you. That's what, <laughs> that's what I came to hear. 
Wow, Kristen. Well, on that note, I think, yeah, I'm hoping we're going to get to hear more about this um, next weekend on the retreat and even just, I don't know, I feel like there's so much more to, to hear about your trip. And um, yeah, yeah, thank you so much for joining me today. And yeah, it's a real joy to hear about all of this. Mm. Thank you, Kristen. Mm. Yeah, beautiful. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone.